Pretty historic. Donald Trump becoming the first former president ever to be convicted of a crime. Historic. There is no playbook for this. It's unprecedented. Unprecedented felony conviction of Donald Trump. The unprecedented. Of the found guilty on all counts. Trump has been found guilty. One of the and guilty. Donald Trump found guilty on all 34 counts. Trump is found guilty on 34 fraud charges, giving progressives all over the internet something to worship, finally bigger than themselves, including David French, who makes a shocking admission on the Holy Post about this trial and the real reasons behind it. We'll talk about that and more today on Indie Thinker. Demosthenes was a powerful orator and a Greek statesman. You may not be familiar with the name, but you may be familiar with the fact that he had a speech impediment. And to overcome that speech impediment, he bravely stepped to the ocean side, stuck pebbles in his mouth, and would give long speeches with those pebbles in his mouth until finally he was able to overcome his past difficulty and turn into one of the greatest men of his time. And this is at a time where he is a contemporary of Aristotle. Those days are now gone. Our political leaders look nothing like Demosthenes, and they look more like this. We're going to seize their yachts, their luxury homes, and other ill-begotten gains of Putin's kleptocracy. Yeah. Kleptocracy. The guys who are the kleptocracies. <laughs> So it's time for us to quit pretending, quit the pearl clutching, and let's quit acting as though elections are all about whether or not we want the warrior that has saved the world and rescued us from tyranny or the poet whose beautiful words will capture the heart of America. We don't live in that world any longer. So it's time for us to be honest about the facts on the ground and who our leaders actually are. And as we do that, I think we will not only have a little bit less naivete, but then we can actually really look at what took place in this recent Trump trial. Now, because this show is dedicated to providing Christian answers to cultural issues, I think it's important for us to grapple with the facts of this case, since it's probably one of the biggest cases of our lifetime and certainly one of the biggest historical events. We're going to talk about it, but how should we engage the matter? I hope to show you that today, but also some shocking admissions from David French when he was just recently on the Holy Post. Let's check it out. Martha, with the Trump verdict, we are recording this on Friday morning. On Thursday evening, we got the verdict. He's guilty on 34 counts of fraud. Um, there's a lot out there. Everyone's analyzing this. You did a live stream last night for advisory opinions with Sarah Isger. And I want to direct people there to get into kind of the legal analysis, but I'm I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the political implications of this verdict. Does this change the calculus on the election in any way? I, I think it does, actually, Sky, and, and I'll explain why. Now, obviously, you cannot go to Twitter or any form of social media and get any sense at all that this is changing anybody. It's Democrats right. are celebrating. Republicans are furious. The people in the middle are like, well, okay, I have worries about this case, but also he really did a lot of really nasty things. So how should I think about this? And so if you go on social media where the people who are really engaged in American politics just congregate, it will look like everyone's just reinforcing their priors. And they are, and they are on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you know what the dynamics of the race. So the dynamics of the race are very interesting. As of right now, Joe Biden has a very strong lead with the people who pay a lot of attention to politics. If you're reading newspapers, if you follow politics closely, Joe Biden has a big lead. If you don't pay much attention to politics, you are not a high likelihood voter. You're a low propensity voter. Donald Trump has a big lead with those folks. Now that creates a challenge for Biden. So if you're Biden and you're you're losing with low engagement voters, it becomes very hard to say, well, you just need to tweak your messaging in this way, or you need to change your campaign strategy in this way, because these people aren't paying attention. They won't notice a tweak in campaign strategy. They won't, none of that will register with them at all. Right. However, a headline that says Trump convicted can break through even to the lowest information voter. And so 
I think there is a chance here, and I think a likelihood, that you will see some erosion of Trump. Look, if you're if you're a person who's believing the dam will break against Donald Trump, that's like 2015 thinking or 2016 thinking. This will do it. This is the thing. No, we know nothing is the thing. But we do know that there are things that he does that erode his support, that chip away at his support. So let me faithfully paraphrase for you what David French just said, because he let the mask slip, whether he realizes it or cares to admit it. He said this, that there are some low information voters out there. They don't want to vote for Donald Trump because of his personal foibles, and they don't want to vote for Joe Biden because, let's be honest, the man can't form sentences, walk, and is basically living most of his life in a vegetative state. And he's destroyed everything that he has touched as president. So they don't want to vote for either of these guys, but the way that we can motivate these voters, get them off the sidelines, and get them to vote against Donald Trump is to create shocking headlines. Things like, well, convicted felon, which you're probably going to hear over and over and over again, all the way up until the election in November. Donald Trump is a convicted felon. A convicted, convicted felon. felon. A convicted felon. A convicted felon. Convicted as a felon. A convicted felon. Convicted felon. Convicted felon. A convicted felon. Convicted felon. Convicted felon. Convicted felon. Or maybe Donald Trump guilty on all 34 counts. Now that's just the kind of thing that can make Democrats win elections. Now, I know he didn't come right out and say that, but he got as close as possible to, to doing that. Now, I know there's going to be some people who will argue back with me and say, Reed, he's just being descriptive. He's talking about what is likely to happen, but he isn't necessarily praising that outcome. Uh, here's why I think he is being absolutely prescriptive, because if I were to tell you what I think is likely to happen, and it was anything like what David French just said, I would say, as a caveat, well, we don't really want that kind of election strategy to take place or, or election rigging, you know, where we motivate people to vote based upon a lawfare strategy because we can't actually generate emotional support. That's a very deceptive tactic, and I hope that's not what, what is really going on. But David French offered no such help there. And by the way, throughout this whole podcast, you can go back and see it yourself. We'll give you none of the information that I'm about to give you right now, which clearly points to the fact that this isn't just about Donald Trump's character or what Donald Trump did in the early 2000s with Stormy Daniels. This is more about a political hit job to try to rig an election. And here's just the simple fact pattern that should lead you to that conclusion. First and foremost, the state of New York doesn't have jurisdiction over a trial like this. Ben Shapiro talks about it better than I can because he's a legal mind. And here's what he had to say about it. Let's be real about this. Alvin Bragg brought a misdemeanor charge of falsification of business records that has passed the statute of limitations. The only way that he could spin that into a chargeable offense and extend the statute of limitations is to charge it as a felony. The problem is there is no underlying felony. So the underlying felony that he actually ended up charging was a federal felony. State prosecutors do not have jurisdiction to charge federal felonies. Unbelievably enough, the same exact Biden administration that is insisting that states cannot enforce federal law because of federalism have no problem with the Manhattan DA enforcing federal election finance law that has been already investigated and Trump has not been indicted on anything election related. They apparently are fine with a state DA, a Manhattan DA, going after Donald Trump on a federal election charge. He has no jurisdiction over these issues, none. Also add to the fact that the judge should have recused himself and there was no jurisdiction for the state of New York in this case. The fact that the statute of limitations on this crime had already expired. In fact, it was only five years that they had to try Donald Trump with any of this stuff. And no one had until Alvin Bragg came along. And then add to the fact that the judge also instructed the jury that in the case of a split decision, I'm still going to rule that Donald Trump is guilty. All of that, and then couch it within just this simple and most important fact that Donald Trump has never been convicted of a crime before in his life. And now all of a sudden, at the age of 77, as a first-time offender, he is looking at jail time right on the eve of a federal election that he is most likely to win. And then you have what you need to make the assertion that this has more to do with election rigging than it does with anything else. And you should be ashamed to suggest that this is a great opportunity for those low information voters to become aware of how bad Donald Trump is. Because 
ultimately that brings into question your character rather than the guy who was trying to give hush money to a prostitute. So all that, and you finally come to the realization that when people are faced with this kind of fact pattern, they do what most people do. They maybe start to take in some of that new information and really think deeply about it? Certainly not. Maybe even reconsider who they're going to vote for in 2024? <laughs> Come on, you're a funny guy. Uh, no, what they will actually do is double down and they will retreat from a position of talking about facts and then they'll move into ad hominem attacks talking about character. And that's exactly what these guys did in this podcast. And look, we're at the end of a string. If you go back to last May, of 2023, he was found liable for sex abuse. Then he was found liable for fraud. He was found liable for defaming a sex abuse victim. And now he's been convicted of felony counts related to paying hush money to cover up a purported affair with a porn star right after the birth of his youngest child. And so this is a remarkable string of jury verdicts, judge, uh, judicial determinations. And it's just still remarkable to me, to me Sky that in this broader Christian world, the real outrage is that anyone tried to hold him to account. That's the real yeah. outrage. Not that this guy, that juries and judges have found that this guy has done a lot of utterly reprehensible stuff. Yeah, the, the, the irony of it is when you talk to conservative culture warriors, kind of the MAGA conservative culture warriors, they will argue pretty regularly that we need to protect our society against the corruption of Washington, and we need to protect our children against the 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 sexualization and and per, perverse nature of the LGBT movement, the trans movement, and all these different things that are going on, all the the, the sexual uh, ugliness of our culture. And in order to do those things, we need to defend to death the corruption of Donald Trump and his his affair with a porn star. And the cover-up of that with hush money. Like, it's just bizarre, the, the logic that's going on. Well, let me help you out, Sky. Um, the reason this is very bizarre to you is because it actually makes no sense because there are a total of zero people who actually say what you just said. So in other words, Sky is straw manning and he has to because his position is so weak. So he has to try to create the fictional, the unicorn-like existence of Christian evangelicals who stand beside Donald Trump and say this is a picture of morality. All of us believe that Donald Trump is a godly man who does everything that the, that the Bible tells you a Christian should do. This is a man who turns the other cheek. This is a man who would give anybody his, his coat if he, if he had a coat to spare. He is basically a walking Sermon on the Mount. This is Donald Trump. No, the reason nobody has ever said that is because nobody believes that at all. But it's convenient for Sky to say that because his opinion is bereft of any conscience or actually any facts. And the fact is that it has always been the political game of tyrants to use petty crimes against their opponents. Jordan Peterson has talked about how kindness today is being used as nothing more than a tool for social justice warriors to control the way people talk and the way people think. Uh, here we have that again. So you're a bad person if you just stand beside Donald Trump. Obviously, you love hush money to, uh, to video prostitutes. I, I don't say porn star, by the way. I'll just say video prostitutes. Uh, obviously, you just you absolutely love that kind of stuff, and you're a hypocritical Christian if you do. Again, uh, emotional blackmail, totally a straw man. Nobody actually believes this. The reason Sky is doing this is because when you look at the overwhelming evidence for election rigging and what they're doing to Donald Trump, then you have to kind of retreat to a backup position. This is kind of a Martin Bailey tactic where you have to just go back to this kind of less offensive position and try to assert that as the fact pattern rather than the most important part of this. And of course, Sky is doing that by saying, well, hush money and this, uh, you know, sexual deviant, you know, you, you say you care about grooming children, but uh, look at this sexual deviant over here, even as though those two things were, were equivalent. Um, but even if we're to accept the premise, Donald Trump still wins. Donald Trump is still a better character person than Joe Biden is any day of the week. Let me refresh your memory before Joe Biden was even running for uh, president, or at least before he became our president. Um, and let me remind you that Joe Biden was basically lying about everything. I think my 
I think I probably have a much higher IQ than you do, I suspect. I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class, and in fact ended up in the top half of my class. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees, and I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd like, Frank. Really, Joe? Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class, that he does not have three degrees from college, and that he was not named outstanding political science student in college. Newsweek says Biden actually went to school on a half scholarship, ended up near the bottom of his class, and won only one degree, not three. Now Biden says Newsweek is right. His memory had failed him. After this, Joe Biden would go on in his memoir to suggest that the reason he responded the way that he did so dishonestly was simply because he was frustrated with the individual and he was about to get the flu. And then he would go on to say, and he was out of breath, not only because he was about to get the flu, but because he had just donated both of his lungs and his heart to charity. And he had just helped an old woman cross the street who was blind and was about to get hit by a car. Now, those last two things were total lies, but why does it matter? Because the man is such a prolific liar that it wouldn't be surprising if he had said any of that. All that to say this, not only is Joe Biden a prolific pathological liar, but Joe Biden any day of the week is the real threat to any form of moral democracy in the United States. D Joe Biden is the one that had a whole bunch of men shaking their fake breasts in front of cameras on the White House lawn during Pride Month last year. Joe Biden is the one that's standing behind supposed gender-affirming care, the double mastectomy and the castration of children. Do you think states should have a right to ban gender-affirming health care? I don't think any state or anybody should have the right to do that as a moral question and as a legal question. Joe Biden is the one that's behind third trimester abortions, making sure we can mutilate babies all the way up until birth. So when you take into account the fact that Donald Trump most likely, allegedly, did give hush money to a prostitute because he was having an affair on his wife and didn't want that to come out in the 2016 election. And compare that to the brutal murder of babies being advocated for by Joe Biden in any day of the week. Either one of these things aren't great, but they are certainly not equal. And I do have to say to my Christian friends, not all sin is the same. Yes, both sinners, but those sins, very, very different. So even taking away the way in which this trial unfolded, if you look at the moral quality of these two men, there's still no question in my mind that Trump wins. All men and women created by go, you know the, you know the thing. Now, the reason I bring all this up is not even to defend Donald Trump, but simply to try to, in, to encourage, to implore Christians to engage in second order thinking. Failure to see that what happened with Donald Trump is one of the worst political hack jobs in the history of um, the United States, I think is a failure of second order thinking. Now, what do I mean by that? Second order thinking concerns itself with, and then what? Or in other words, what are the consequences of the things that you are stating and believing? Christians are so used to dogmatism and flatly stating ideas from scripture definitively that often they don't think beyond that to think about the consequences of their beliefs. Now there's a part of that that's, that's really important, but we should get in the, in the habit of thinking about, hey, if I believe this, what does that mean? So in the Trump case, the first, the first order to concern ourselves with is that Trump most likely paid a prostitute to be quiet about an affair. There's not a soul that disagrees with how morally gross that is. The problem is and has always been the alternative is Joe Biden, a dude that committed fraud, that mishandled documents, that raped Tara Reid, kills babies, believes men can get pregnant and will continue to destroy our country if allowed to win in 2024. And by the way, will continue to do even worse than that if he's allowed to win via duplicitous means rather than merit. The moral nature of Trump's actions are bad. The actual legal nature of his crime, though, is what we're really talking about here. And to put it in a word, it is petty. If that's true, then you should take into account the specious kangaroo court that we just witnessed. Push aside all the emotional blackmail about Trump not being a very nice man and ask what are the consequences of a political party attacking its rival this way? Even if Biden didn't officially order that hit, 
it still needs to be asked and still needs to be viewed through the lens of a political hack job. Please don't put your cape on and pretend that law and order and justice and virtue are what you're really concerned about if you can't see that. You don't give two flips about that. You're not crying for Joe Biden to answer for his indiscretions with his son. You're not worried that Biden is a pathological liar. But even if you are, the fact pattern I already laid out should give you pause. Is this really about the law? Or is it about political elites that are threatened by Trump's victories? If the latter, you have a moral and spiritual obligation to get this thing right. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below if this episode was helpful to you. Don't forget also to check out our show sponsors today down in the comments section, or to sign up for our newsletter where you can gain IndieThinker extras and exclusives. But most importantly, go with God.